Daniel Andrews is Australia's longest serving current Premier and he's vying for a third term in power. Dani Labor is doing what matters. He has fervent supporters. <laughs> and vitriolic detractors. Now even our own unions are admitting he's a prick. Don't let him get away with it. Put Labor last. The Liberals have brought back their 2018 challenger, Matthew Guy. For the sake of all of those people impacted by Daniel Andrews and his world record lockdowns, we must win this election. Now he's back and so are his plans for cuts. Don't vote for the Liberals. What we've really got at the moment is two pretty unpopular parties and two reasonably unpopular leaders. Polls show voters care most about bread and butter issues, but they're also concerned about public integrity. Although the major parties in policy terms have focused around health and cost of living issues, um, probity issues, integrity issues have kept on bubbling to the surface during this campaign. We begin with breaking news. Daniel Andrews is at the centre of another secret anti-corruption investigation. This is the fourth time, the fourth time. Uh, this government is involved in an anti-corruption commission investigation. And Liberal leader Matthew Guy has been referred to the anti-corruption watchdog. Over allegations, his former chief of staff, Mitch Catlin, tried to get around political donation laws. Labor was the clear favourite heading into this election, but new polling shows it won't be an easy win. The opinion polls are indicating there's enough seats for Labor and the Greens to have a majority. Now, whether Labor has a majority in its own right or not, I'm not sure. If there's a hung parliament, that could deliver significant power to minor parties and independents, the real wild cards of this election. Hawthorne is exactly where you'd expect to find a teal independent. <laughs> Morning. Hello. Morning. I'm Melissa, independent candidate for Hawthorne. It's an affluent inner city seat and Melissa Lowe is the Climate 200 funded candidate. So initially it was like, ah, oh, they were surprised to see somebody running at a state level. One, two, three, Marcy. This is the same community campaign that unseated the treasurer Josh Frydenberg in the federal election. And it's even being run from the same office. The thing that a lot of people in Hawthorne are talking about is logging. They're really concerned about our native forests and the habitat loss and also the loss of species. Until 2018, this was a safe Liberal seat. Now it's anyone's guess. Okay. I'm the Liberal. Sorry, sorry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The former Liberal member John Pesuto wants to win it back and can only spare a few minutes for a coffee. He's touted as a future party leader, if he can keep the teals at bay. I just don't see why the same narrative that worked at the federal election would work necessarily here. We've, on integrity, we own that space because we set up IBAC, we've... But do you, you know, think you've got Matthew Guy on the front page of the paper today well, being referred to IBAC? Well, yeah, there's lots of IBAC things going on. This is really competitive and, you know, I've, I've, I've got to play catch-up, so I'm the one coming from behind. That's because in 2018, retiree John Kennedy surprised everyone, himself included, by winning the seat for Labor. I'm encouraged uh, that a number of people have said, yeah, you've done a good job, we'd like you to, to, to hang on. And that's something that I really would welcome. Melbourne's ever-expanding suburbs. What's really interesting about Melton, though, is just how many people here voted for an independent at the last election. In 2018, more people voted for an independent than for Labor's Steve McGee. He holds the seat by the slimmest of margins. I mean, people are obviously running this, this agenda of if you make seats marginal, then you're going to um, be delivered more. Now, that might have been proven in other electorates. I don't necessarily agree with that because I've been a strong advocate for the things that I've delivered. The Liberals' Graham Watt moved to Melton earlier this year. We've got this growing pains, so many people coming in, but the infrastructure hasn't actually kept up with it. 
He's done a preference deal with an independent. So we are, we're preferencing Jared. Jared Bingham, local snake catcher. I almost became last, uh, elected last time. Okay. He's going to be very, very close this time. If this seat was all of a sudden to become a swigging seat, we'd get everything. But it's hard to electioneer with all the snakes about. So did you just get an alert saying someone's seen a snake? A snake under the back doorstep. Oh, here it is. So, that's a little brown snake. It was extremely close last time. I'm hoping we can go one better and uh, take it to a two-party preferred. When you have the balance of power and the government of the day relies on you to, to pass that budget, well, you can give me a little shopping list and you say, hey, oh, actually, my electorate needs a hospital. We need to upgrade the Western Freeway. We need diamond interchange. Despite the booming population, the nearest major hospital is half an hour drive away. This is the land that's been acquired for Melton Hospital. Dr Ian Virgil's a single-issue independent candidate. Five weeks before the election, they graded the paddock and put up the temporary fence. I sense some cynicism. Total cynicism. They have nothing but trying to con us into something's going ahead here. This hospital was only promised after Ian Virgil's campaign in 2018 shook the major parties. He came third with preferences. Polls have been open for a week and a half now, and nearly a third of enrolled Victorians have already cast their vote. Labor's majority now seems to be at risk. Last night, the leaders made a final pitch to 100 undecided voters. Our state deserves a Premier who can unite us, not divide us. You can do the popular thing or you can do the right thing, and I always try and do the right thing. This election is going to be fascinating to see if the trend that was witnessed at the federal election in May of a shifting of support away from major parties to minor parties and independents, that's confirmed as the new norm of Australian politics.